Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using some new red rubber stamps from Purple Onion Designs. This is from the line of stamps from Stacy Yakula. I think that's how you say her name. And I'm going to be using two of these, and in fact, I'm cutting this first one in, in half so that I can use the corner separately. That is the Floral Corners stamp set, and I'm also going to be using the Floral Spray stamp set. The Wreath and the Bunny are also available, but I won't be using those today. So I have some white envelopes here, and I'm going to be stamping on them. And then I also have my Fiskars Compact Stamp Press that I've applied some tack and peel on. And the last time I used some of these unmounted stamps, I showed you guys how I put the tack and peel on the stamp press. And I just kept it like that. I made sure to leave that clear sheet on top to protect it. And months later, when I come back to use some more unmounted stamps, it's perfect. It works great. I'm able to stick the stamps to my stamp press and then stamp them on my project. In this case, I'm stamping onto a Nina Classic Crest Solar White Envelope. Um, these are sold by Studio Katya. There's also a couple of other places online where you can purchase them, so I'll link to those down below. So I'm taking that floral spray and I've stamped it on the bottom of the envelope. And then I'm gonna take the first corner stamp and I'm making sure that I'm using the grid on my stamp press in order to get that lined up. Since I can't see through the stamp to see where it's going, I'm relying on some precision mounting to make it so that I get a nice corner here. So I'm lining up the grid on my compact stamp press over the top of my envelope and making sure that I get that corner on there just perfectly. I did the same thing for the other corner. I made sure it was lined up with that grid on the compact stamp press, and then I used the same grid to help me get this position just right for the other corner. And this, the ink I'm using today for all of my stamping is VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I'm gonna do some colored pencils. So I got a little ink on my stamp press when I was moving things around and I got it on my envelope. So I used a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser just to erase some of that. It does take away a little bit of the surface of the paper, so you have to be careful with it. But it did clean it up quite a bit. So now I'm going to take some Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and I'm going to be adding color to all of the floral images. Now I'm going to be coloring this for a long time. I think I had 30 minutes of video footage of just coloring. So I'm going to speed this up and turn on some music so you can see the full coloring process. But I don't want to make you watch it in real time because it took quite a bit of time. So I'll catch you after all of the coloring is complete.
Basically, all of the coloring is complete. I use similar color palettes on both envelopes, and I really love how they turned out. Some nice spring and summer colored flowers. They look really beautiful. So in order to finish these envelopes, I'm going to do some calligraphy, and I'm drawing on some guidelines with a T-square ruler and a pencil just to help me while I write on these envelopes. Sometimes I like to use a laser square for this, other times I just like to go straight in with a pencil and a ruler. So I'm using some black ink and an oblique pen holder with a pointed pen nib to do some calligraphy. So I'm doing a very straight up and down style on this first envelope and I'll speed this up here in a minute. I just wanted to show you how slow I write when I'm doing calligraphy like this. Uh, I think a lot of people when they first start out with calligraphy tend to write a little bit too quickly. So if you slow down it will really help you. I also wanted to mention that the two mailing addresses that I'm using today on these envelopes are uh, with permission. I have permission from both people. So thank you so much to both of you. And um, I, a lot of you have been asking how you can get on my mailing list. Um, this mailing list, I got it, um, I asked on Facebook and I think it was like a couple years ago. So I'm kind of hoping these addresses are still valid, but I asked a couple years ago on Facebook to, you know, reply to a comment if you were okay with having your address shared online. And there were hundreds and hundreds of you guys who replied. So I have a lot of addresses already, but I think since it's been such a long time that um, in the next week or two, and I'll let you guys know, I'm going to add a form over at my blog where you can fill out your information and, you know, accept the terms that your address might be shown online and that you're okay with that. Um, but then it, I randomly pick people from that list. So I'll start a new list soon and um, you'll have a chance to have your address put on there. So just watch for that. It'll probably happen pretty soon. For this second address, I did more of a slanted style. So it's a little bit different. And after I had the addresses, I picked out some postage stamps. I did one forever stamp on each one and then also a vintage stamp on each one. And I just wet a paper towel and press those stamps into it to moisten the adhesive on the back and then press them onto my envelope. So those are the two envelopes today, these floral stamped and colored pencil colored envelopes. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, once again, these stamps are available over at Purple Onion Designs. And thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.